Well, as we move forward, we get into our respiratory zone. And as we move forward here, you have less cilia. That's not necessary because now the conducting zone, hopefully it's done its job properly. Has it gotten rid of those antigens and such and it, gone it is. But uh, now down here, we start getting our true air. And as we go through this, I'd like, to, I'd like to point out a few things physiologically. You've heard of dead space, haven't you? Yes. What dead space, what does that mean to you? It means that it is air that's getting into the divisions or the bronchial tree, and however, doesn't participate in gas exchange. Now, we will only talk about dead space where it's relevant to us in pathology, but it's imperative that from physiology that you've understood the, the definition of dead space. For example, if it's anatomical dead space, there are anatomical holes. I, wish, I, wish, I shouldn't say holes, but there are anatomical uh, existence or anatomical type of crevices that exist in which it accumulates the air as one is breathing in. But guess what? That air that gets anatomically trapped, maybe up in the uh, uh, respiratory zone, will not participate in gas exchange because it doesn't make it into the alveoli. So what I wish for you to do is clearly see the picture of an alveolar sac, air coming in, but then it gets trapped anatomically. Don't, you don't have to know exactly where those spots are. Well, if it gets trapped, guess what? That air is not going to participate in gas exchange because it didn't make it down into the alveola. Now, something else that we'll do as we move forward is very much go through our alveolar gas formula. It's important that you understand what's known as an AA gradient clinically as we move forward. Now, the last little portion here distally, we'll go into more detail and a couple of things that I wish to point out here that students tend to get confused with, but you will be clear after our discussion. Infections. In blue, once again, First, I'd like to point out number four, which is your typical pneumonia. And by typical pneumonia, yes, there's going to be productive cough. There's going to be quite a bit of fever. And that productive cough is then going to show you maybe different types of sputum. Maybe it's rust, rust colored. And by, by that, me, we mean that there's blood tinged type of sputum. Maybe it's yellow or golden. That to you maybe indicates staph aureus. Maybe it's uh, green. And we talked about pseudomonas and pyosine. You get my point. Or maybe it's mucoid, very mucoid. And what was, that, what was the type of pneumonia? It's quite common in elderly and also in alcoholics. That was Klebsiella pneumonia. So keep that in mind as we go through typical pneumonia in which the fevers are quite high. You expect the sputum to be quite productive. Isn't that typical? Of course it is. And then maybe perhaps uh, you bring in issues such as low bar consolidation or bronco. So both of those will be typical. Is that clear? Now, you'll notice it with number four, and I wish to point out this to you. Otherwise, you might get confused. And this will be involvement of the alveoli. So, therefore, the type of sputum that you're going to then aspirate is going to be alveolar, isn't it? The alveolar type of sputum so that you can definitely, definitely be able to culture that organism versus number three. Number three in blue here represents a pneumonia, but this is a typical pneumonia. What does that mean? Take a look at the name here. The description is interstitial organisms. Do you understand the significance of that? Is the interstitium the alveoli? No, no, no. The interstitium, it's outside the alveoli by definition. So what is the most common type of organism that is going to cause disease of the interstitium, but most likely would spare your alveoli? Good. Mycoplasma pneumonia is the most common type of atypical pneumonia. Why do we say atypical? That number three represents pneumonia of the interstitium, not the alveoli. It's outside of it, number one. Number two, we say atypical because the patient's fever is not going to be high. It'll be a low-grade fever. Is that understood? Number three, wow, on chest x-ray, if you have interstitium of the lung that's affected, do you think that you might find markings on x-ray, chest x-ray? Sure you will. So this is called what on chest x-ray? Reticular nodules or reticular pattern. What's reticular mean? It means meshwork. So literally interstitium, you're going to find all this meshwork. So therefore the chest x-ray and its findings is going to be far worse than what the actual patient is feeling. We call this what kind of pneumonia? Atypical. Now, if the same type of chest x-ray image, instead of an x-ray, was you were, you were doing a CT. On CT, well, that reticular pattern that you would refer to is now called what? Ground glass type of appearance. Think about what ground glass looks like. It looks rather opaque-ish, doesn't it? 
What is this? Atypical pneumonia. We'll be spending time with this. There's number three and number four. Make sure you understand the significance of typical, number four, number three, atypical. Moving to diseases. Here, way down in the distal portion, what zone are we in now? The respiratory zone, involvement in gas exchange. Emphysema. With emphysema, there will be a lot to talk about. Here, once again, I recommend that you go back and take a look at pulmonary physiology so that you're completely clear about what sea level ambient air is in terms of pressure, barometric, is 760 millimeters mercury. When you get this air into the trachea, it's going to then get humidified. That value is 47. Are we clear? So you have 760 minus 47. Then what do you do? Anywhere that you are on planet Earth, I don't care if it's sea level, and I don't care if you're at Mount Everest, the oxygen concentration, your fractional oxygen on planet Earth is how much? 0.21. Now, for simplicity purposes, say that you're taking an exam, taking your boards or whatnot, then you can use 0.2, you'll be perfectly fine. What does 0.2 mean to you in terms of percentage? It means 20%. I said planet Earth. What about planet hospital? <laughs> well, planet hospital, it depends. So in a hospital, they can change it because we as human beings love to manipulate things. And so therefore, you're manipulating the oxygen that you're receiving instead of 20%, or well, maybe your patient requires 40% requires maybe even 100%. So please do not use 0.2, maybe use 0.4, representing 40%, or 100% would be 1.0. Are we clear? I'm just going to take as far as that right now. But as I said, this is all learned in physiology. It would behoove you to make sure that you're comfortable with that material before moving in, especially when I start getting into AA grading. That's the second time that I've made such a reference. And then we have adenocarcinoma here, number five. Now, adenocarcinoma is rather interesting. First and foremost, it doesn't have to be a non-smoker. And its preponderance could also be found in females. Scary. Number one since 1980s in the United States as being the number one lung cancer. Is squamous and small up there? They're up there, but understand number one is adenocarcinoma. So we will walk through adenocarcinoma in great detail. Don't you worry. Next, adenocarcinoma also on chest x-ray becomes important to us because we then refer to this being peripheral, peripheral. All of these come under what kind of lung cancer? Bronchogenic type of lung cancer. Obviously, we did not re refer to a, a bronchial carcinoid because that, that's non-bronchogenic, and we did not refer to a mesothelioma because that is non-bronchogenic. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.